Hello everybody, it's been a long time since I've used this camera. I don't know if the lighting is going to work in here. This is my first time doing a nighttime video in my vehicle. Um, obviously I'm at work. For once, uh, I decided to grab my camera this time and use it again. I'm sitting here watching my uh, my log book. Excuse me. Excuse my hand. Watching my log book tick down. If you can see the red there, it says two minutes. I got two minutes to sit here and uh, before I can leave. I'm just ready to go. I'm all hooked up to my trailer. I'm, I'm like everybody's waiting to see when the heck I'm going to get out of here. But I showed up 30 minutes late this morning. And uh, I can't leave for another minute. I'm uh, in O'Hare International Airport. And I do a run now from... Uh, O'Hare International to, uh, excuse me, to, uh, Detroit, Romulus, actually, I do this all week, and then I go home on, uh, Friday evening, I get there about Saturday morning, uh, so we're gonna get ready to get going here, today was my wife's birthday happy birthday my love she is uh, the ripe old age of 26 <laughs> there we go excuse any uh, little ticking and tapping on the uh, on the uh, thingamajig. This is that waterproof cover for this camera that the camera is sitting in on my dashboard on a mount. Sometimes it'll tend to get a little ticking noise on it. Little ch -ch 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 -ch, you know, you can hear the cover. I tried to figure out how to pull the cover off today, but not without damaging the case. So, we are uh, going to get going here. 292 mile run. And then I... Uh, back up to the building there, they do their thing, and I come right back here again. Pretty boring. Especially since my my, my phone got, uh, I used up all my gig on my internet, and uh, next month I'm going up to, uh, I use one of those prepaid phones to control my costs. Ooh, lighting. Bright light in the tunnel. Um, you know, when I first started with with that with the internet with the company with a phone, it was uh, three gig for internet, and then they went up to uh, no wait, it started off as two gigs, then they went to three, and now they're five, and now they're offering for an extra ten dollars a month. Uh, 10 gigs because you know I watch my YouTube I'm a, I'm a YouTuber I enjoy watching my YouTube and uh, I use my phone while I'm sitting there taking my break at, at the airport I wish they offered uh, Wi-Fi but no now I'll sit at this light um, anyway wifey's birthday baby's doing fine if she would stop dropping the baby actually the baby is learning it's it's starting to learn to scoot and he scooted himself right off the bed this morning <laughs> he needs to learn his limit uh, so, so she calls me all upset and the baby fell off. There's carpeting. I mean, you know. I told her, okay, well, you got, you know, she, she said, I went to the kitchen for a minute and the baby was crying. And I found him on the floor and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, you 
start putting pillows on the floor or stop leaving him on the bed. Or, you know, put pillows around the edge of the bed so he can't, um, can't, uh, go past the edges. What the, oh, my headlights went off. I thought I had a mom. I, <laughs> okay, got dark for a minute. Uh, I really hope I'm not in shadow here. You know, that would really suck. Do all this talking for nothing. Um, so, little Anton is learning to scoot now. He's playing with his, his tongue, making little noises and stuff like that. God forbid you should let him go hungry for a second. I, I remember with my other son when he was little, well actually when he was like in his early teen, his tween years, a non-stop eater, man. I mean, eat you out of house and home. And he's a little skinny guy. He's 23? I think he's 20, yeah, 23. 23 now, and uh, still skinny, but of course when I was 23, I was, I was a bean pole too, so, and now look at me, the things that happen to you with age, oh my, so, we are, uh, you know, enjoying the process of uh, raising our little child, and uh, now the bills come in from the hospital. Yes, people, you gotta pay for the children. <laughs> you know, my my other two grow children, they uh, they were born when I was in the service, so you know the, we had to pay for them. I mean we paid for the food in the hospital for my ex and then uh, for my son yeah, we had him in a, in a civilian hospital, so I had to pay extra for the for a second surgeon to come in to stand by and watch. I guess New Jersey, where my son was born, and if they did a C-section, they had two physicians present. So I had to pay 500 bucks for this other guy to show up and stand around. I try to fight it, but it was no use. Uh, so now we got our big bill consolidated, and we should have Anton paid for in about two and a half years. So until then, you know, we, we always joke, you know, well, we can just stop paying and they can come repo the kid, you know. That'll be it. But uh, he's grown, we've grown kind of attached to him. Um, so I guess I have to pay for him. And Lizelle is chomping at the bits. I'm sorry for the nose thing. I got an itch. Um, Lizelle is chomping at the bit to get back to work. But I'm gone, you know, doing my job, pay for everything else. I told her, I, you know, I don't tell my wife what she can't do, but I will tell her, or inform her, I should say, of the limitations. I said, you want to go back to work, find a job, go back to work, but it has to be within the times that, you know, I'm home, you know? So it has to be basically, you know, on the weekends and stuff like that, and, that, and then that leaves me with, with little Anton, which I'm perfectly fine with, but she gets all guilty and stuff because she realizes that my weekend is my rest time. That's when I'm supposed to be resting. And I got housework to do, not cleaning and shit like that. I don't, excuse me. I don't, I, don't, I don't have that cleaning chores. But I have to, uh, next month I got to purchase some items, you know, sanders and paint and pans and rollers because I got to start painting. Summer and spring is short in Wisconsin, you know, and I got a lot of painting to do. 
I have one window in the front room that with the heat this weekend, it was in the 80s. Yeah, 80s. Today it's 50. So it's, it went back down. But one of the windows, they're a wood frame and it swelled up. So I couldn't open the window when I was at home. Luckily, I have other windows in that room, but you know, I like to have all my windows working. So I don't know how to get the swelling out of the. Anybody know? Leave it down in the comments how to get the, the swelling out of the wood <laughs> so that the. Uh, so I can uh, get my window open. I don't know how you do that. Anyway, they left. They, the previous owners. Um, they just stained our windows. They saw it in the other video, and I apologize for my, my last video where it ended so abruptly. I was using my phone and it just ran out of storage space and that was it. Um, if you see that video, all my windows are stained. They're not painted. So I'm thinking that's why the moisture gets into the wood and then when it warms up, everything swells up. So I am considering, I'm gonna do one window as a test, little section, a test to see what it comes out like. But I wanna paint it, especially in the kitchen. There's one window there that gets really wet in the winter time with the heat and condensation and all that. I think the wood should be painted so it's soaked into the wood and moisture doesn't get in there. Um, I mean, these are, how old's the house? 50, 60, 70, 90, 2000, 60 something year old house and the original, a lot of the windows are original. They, they kept the windows, but some of the casings are vinyl or aluminum or something, but they kept the original casing, which is fine because it keeps the, the look of, uh, damn, I must have a little hair. I hadn't shaved today, but I don't shave all week. Uh, wait till I get home. So I'm gonna test that window and see what it looks like painted, you know, white enamel. Um, then um, I have all the windows in the house to paint, inside and out. But the biggest project that I'm waiting for middle of the summertime when it's the hottest yeah it is the front porch which I have to cut a section out which means you have to understand I don't have any tools I mean I've been an apartment dweller for a long time and I don't have any jigsaws or you know any kind of saw I don't have a hand saw and I have this section little set little end part of the one of the boards on the front porch it's a wooden porch so one of the bottom planks has a hole in it I guess it's where there was a knot and then it just rotted bigger so I have to you know get underneath under one of the braces which would be in the driveway overhead and uh, put in a piece there so I can cut the wood out without having to replace the entire plank put in a new piece of plank in that section and then I have to paint sand paint you know the entire porch and railings and the underside and everything so it's gonna be an adventure um, you know that wood really needs to be painted to preserve it and uh, here we are I'm gonna grab you again hold on figure out another way to get you out of there. Here we are going down I-294 in Chicago. Um, just paid the toll there automatically. Anyway, traffic's light right now. I don't know. Well, oh, it's 9.19 in the evening. I got a hustle today. I can't even stop for my customary 30 minute nap today. I got to catch up to myself. <laughs> So uh, the weather's pretty nice. A little sprinkle happening right now. You know, it's nice. Nice weather. So, okay, let's put you back. And uh, 
Hopefully I'll get this video uploaded this weekend when I get home. On the road is impossible. So all these videos that you see on this camera and stuff, they'll be a week behind. Um, so that's what I gotta do to the house. I got projects in the garden in the front yard. They just didn't do anything to it. They left some old plants there that you know they're starting to come back up right now, but there's no flowers to speak of really. Nothing nothing blooming in the front yard. Uh, I gotta replace the light on the post in the front yard. It's just being held on by duct tape. Yeah. I knew that when I bought the house. I mean, that's why I paid 65 for it. I mean, come on. What do you expect? I mean, it passed inspection and everything. So, and it was a VA, so you know it had to pass the inspection, the appraisal, and all. It had a lot of loops to, loops to jump through. Uh, the house overall is in great shape, so I'm not really complaining about that. Uh, it's just that it needs to be updated. Speaking of updating, mind you, I don't have squat in the bank <laughs> right now after having a baby, but in the future plans, you know, I got a cracked tile. They tiled the top of the, of the kitchen counter, which in the beginning I, I liked, but it's got to go. It's just, it's not working out. It's cracked and it's it's traveling to the next tile over. I kind of put some sealant in it to try to keep some of the moisture from getting down into the wood. And my cabinets and counters are the original for the house, which I am doing everything in my power to keep. And everybody goes, why? Just rip the cabinets out. I mean, okay. Why don't I want to rip the cabinets out of my kitchen? They're hardwood. They're, do you know how much it costs people to have hardwood cabinets made in their kitchen? I mean, these were 1950, granted, but there's lots of storage in those cabinets. I mean, they're super tall. My wife can't reach the top two shelves. I have to buy her a ladder to reach the top two shelves. In the I mean, we don't have enough stuff right now, thankfully, to fill the cabinets. So I have no excuse. We just knock off those tiles off the countertop and have somebody, you know, I don't think we're going to go with granite, mind you, because that's kind of pricey, but, you know, Corian or some other material that, uh, hell, I mean, I don't know how much it costs to make a, a cement countertop. Those I've seen those recently on the DIY uh, YouTube channels and stuff, and uh, on some of the other. What's that show called? Uh, oh, you know, Property Brothers, Fix It, uh, Fixer Upper. You know, all those programs. Um, concrete countertops. They look really nice, but it looks like a lot of work for the. You gotta have them custom made, so I'm not about to, you know, go into that project on my own. That's just beyond me. I'm, I'm not that handy. <laughs> I'll admit it, I'm not that handy. Uh, but I have to buy tools. So starting next month, I'm gonna start buying tools one at a time. I got a shop vac. I've got a. I got my eye on because I gotta vacuum up all the chip paint and everything from the window sashes around the windows and everything. I gotta start chipping all that paint away. Um, I'm just gonna, you know, shop back it up. And the, uh, let's get warm in here. Um, uh, what else? Hand sanders and uh, for, you know, all the sanding, of, of course. I, mean, I can do sanding by hand. But why would you buy a $35, $40 hand sander? <laughs> I've already figured out they make the money on the sanding, you know, on the attachment for the, the paper, and the sticky paper and all that. But when I was in the, in the military, we, we learned a way to get by buying those big expensive rolls of, of, of sticky, sticky back sandpaper. You know, it, and it saves you a lot of money if you just buy a big, big sheets of sandpaper cut out the circles for the sander, I 
and just spray some adhesive on it. A can, you know, buy a big can of adhesive. Quick passes, you know, let it dry for a few seconds and stick it on. You know, saves you a lot of money from doing that other stuff. You know, just buying the big rolls that were really expensive. Um, where we'll go with that. Lizelle wants to go back to work. I keep trying to push her back into the, you know, she was good at her job as a caregiver, but she says she wants to do something else, but in that little town we live in is, you know, I'm sorry, I think my wife's better than McDonald's, you know, do you, don't you all think your wives are better than McDonald's? I mean, come on, McDonald's is for teenagers or older people that are on a retirement income. That's how I feel about it. And that's why these people that keep saying, we need $15 an hour, we can't support our families. Up in You're not supposed to support your family on, on McDonald's. You know, that was like a, a pick up some extra cash job. Unless you want to eat management. If you, if you can work your way to management, wonderful. Oh, these people, man, just can get out of my way. Woo! Ladder in the highway. Yeah, it's not any good anymore. So everybody's been running over it. I could have used a ladder if I had found it before it got demolished. Have you? T Speaking of ladders, have you? Have you priced the for the this for the American guys and and and, and if you're in, in you know UK or wherever you know have you priced the cost of a ladder lately? What? Gosh, man. it's like I went to my local hardware store and this what was it? You know, six, seven foot step ladder it was like eighty dollars. Eighty dollars for <laughs> oh yeah, that was crazy, man. And of course, I went to the big box store. I went, I mean, I went over to Walmart, and I can get a you know a long extendable. 20 foot ladder for $80. The problem is getting it home. Now this other hardware store that was $80 for a shorter one is across the street. Well, down the street, you know, to the corner and across the street. So I could walk it home. <laughs> and this one in Walmart is you know, 25, 30 miles away. And I don't see a long extendable ladder fitting on the roof of my little Toyota Camry. That's me. It, it would be a hell of a video if I if I have to do that. There will be a video involved where I have to put this large extendable ladder on the roof of my car, to lash down with flags on both ends. You know, <laughs> weaving my way through traffic on the way all the way back home. So. Uh, you know, then uh, I still have to go to the to the big hardware store, the big one. You know, not you know HD or L, but another one. You know, they want to throw me some bucks for sponsorship. They can, you know, they can. I'll mention their name, but we're so we we have to go to that store still to price some ladders. Uh, it'd be great if they could deliver. Oh, you know, if they deliver. I'm sure they deliver to contractors when they have big orders. I mean, if I buy two ladders, one for inside, one for outside, because I have to clean my gutters. The rain gutters around the house are full of leaves, and it's raining season coming up here, people, and I, you know, my gutters are all going to be backed up, so then it'll, then there'll be ice dams in the wintertime and everything. So I definitely need some ladders. So I need, if anybody wants to send me some tools, please let me know. I'll give you my address. <laughs> I need everything. I mean, I got, I got those little kits with screwdrivers and ratchets. And I don't have any open-end box wrenches or box wrenches or... Uh, I used to have a whole big Craftsman tool set. My father... When I left home, he sent me off in my car with four brand new tires and a complete mechanics toolkit 
Craftsman with the toolbox, all the tools in it that I ever needed to do brake jobs, oil changes, tune-ups, all that. And this is when I went off to the service. And of course, I put this big thing in my locker. I could have swore I locked my locker, but my roommate at that time decided he was gonna go AWOL. And he took all of my BDUs, those are the green camouflage uniforms, and my tools, and my 35 millimeter camera with lenses to some pawn shop or pawn them on the way to Arkansas to run away from the army, which they found him a week later, of course, and dragged his butt back. And, you know, I never saw my property again and never, never, I haven't recovered since. You know, that's a big investment. I had a large investment in tools. My father paid for a lot of them. And I picked up tools as I went along. Just like every man does, he, he builds up his collection of tools. Now I have a, a workshop in my house and I have two boxes of BS tools. You know, the stuff you give your daughter when she moves into an apartment with a little hammer and a, a pair of pliers and, you know, the little things. I have some ratchets, some rent. That, I don't have any wrenches. I got some Allen keys. You know, some Allen wrenches to fit some of the stuff now. The torque heads and all that. So I ramble on. Now you know where I stand in my tool collection. And I have lots of work to do at the house. And, and I just can't get started for some reason. It's just like, you know what? I'm so tired by the time I get home. You go, tired? You drive a truck? Yeah, but I'm I'm up 15 hours before I get home on Saturday. I mean, I woke up uh, Friday, you know, Friday afternoon I get up and then I have to, you know, hightail it up north a little way. It's about an hour away to get my load. And then I'm driving all night, overnight, to get it up to Minneapolis, St. Paul area up there, to get there by eight, nine o'clock in the morning, drop it off, and then I go to my terminal, leave my truck, get my car, and drive two hours to the house. So yeah, I'm tired by the time I get home. So luckily my wife's very understanding. She lets me chill the first day. She doesn't make me go anywhere. This past weekend, she didn't make me go to the grocery store, man. She got, her girlfriend and her went to the grocery store together. Oh, that was so great. Yes, I stayed home with the baby. I don't care. He took a nap. I played video games. I was in heaven. You know, me, Call of Duty or or whatever other game I decided to pop in that, that at that time and the baby sleeping soundly behind me and a snack in front of me, I'm set. I'm happy. I'm relaxed. Then the next day, what was that? That would be Sunday. What did I do Sunday? Nothing. Not a doggone thing. My wife and I stayed home. She I guess my wife waits for me to get home to go into her cleaning mode because the amount of time she spent in our bathroom, I went by there, everything in the bathroom was in the hallway and she was scrubbing and disinfecting. I mean, she just got a ball of, a, a head of steam going, man, and you, get, you just don't get in her way when she's cleaning. And then she went nuts in the kitchen and the living room. And everything. I said, you clean everything up here except for downstairs in the family room. She ignores that room because it's my room. It's my man cave. I said, okay, great. So I have to clean my man cave now. You know, and as soon as the baby's big enough, you know that man cave is going to turn into a, a playroom. <laughs> I mean, I don't go out, go down there very often unless I want to get away from her, buddy. I'm gone all week, so I usually hang out in the bedroom with them. And we don't use the living room that often, really, for anything. You 
know, unless company comes over. And we usually sit around the bedroom watching TV in there, and playing with the baby and whatnot. So now she's bugging me to, I gotta buy the baby a, uh, Past this guy on the highway back there, and the whole front end of his car is all caved in. There's nothing around that he could have hit except maybe the wall. All right, well, I have to buy a crib mattress for the baby because she wants to start training him to sleep in the crib. And that's fine with me because I need to get him out of my bed. He's cramping my style. You know what I mean. Okay, well, you're all up to date now. These videos, if you're just coming a lot on this one, your first time, go back to the beginning, you know, follow the thread. Uh, they're kind of eclectic, they're not really following any pattern. They're for, you know, showing, you know, if you're in the Philippines, uh, got a fiance or whatever or you live here already you're I, I got some hellos today on my uh, on my channel people are leaving some comments saying you know they're married they're they're a philam couple you know Filipino American couple together you know God bless and I appreciate all that and, um, yeah it shows you what life is sort of like but it's mundane Okay, what's mundane? It's ordinary, the ordinary life. Your day-to-day -day stuff, you know. It, life is not always a big adventure, even though I try to, you know, in this setting, yeah, it could be a, an adventure, but my wife doesn't ride in the truck with me anymore. She's at home being a mommy, so. Um, this is the mundane life, the ordinary life. Maybe I should rename the, you know, the, the channel, the mundane, or the ordinary. Um, what do you think? And you're, thank you for not cutting me off today. Very nice. Now if you can stay on your side of the line. Any of you live in the Chicago area, say hi. I don't live in Chicago, but I'm here all week. Uh, on the 294 bypass going around the city, I'm in a semi. And if you ever wonder why, why the hell is that big truck in the third lane where you're not supposed to be out that far? That's my lane. That says Andy's lane. You never see the sign? It's Andy's lane. It's my lane. I use it, and guess what? The state patrol here is nice enough to leave me alone. Speed limit, you know, in some areas now is 60, some areas 55, but I do 64. All right, I don't do 64. But anyway, I'm just cruising along here. See, people are still passing me by. It's not like I'm, I'm you know, driving like the devil through here. Uh, traffic's light, the weather's nice, it stopped sprinkling, it's no more rain. Uh, and that's it. Say hi, leave comments, like. I really look forward to hearing comments, you know, besides the ordinary, you know, to the people who, uh, I'm going to start writing down the names of people that, that start subscribing so I can say hi. Um, <coughs> and welcome. If you have any suggestions, please speak up. Sometimes I run out of ideas. These videos are not edited. Maybe they will be in the future. I have edited in the past some of my videos, but since I don't do them but like once a week or something like that, I think I just want to get them out there and um, it's straight, you know, off the cuff, just straight say it how it is. If my wife is around, I will point the camera at her and I keep, I'm, I'm working on getting her into a situation time-wise 
where we can sit down and do an interview, question answer thing. So if anybody has questions, I've, I've mentioned this in the past in some of my other videos, if everybody has anybody has questions for her, leave them in the comments down below. I'll write them down and then when the question answer video comes up, I will uh, ask her. Told her to put together a video in, in Visayan. That's, that's her native language, Visayan. But, you know, Cebuano, all that. And she's from Cebu, uh, Cebu City, Pardo. So if any of you girls are watching and you're from that neighborhood of the city, say hi. You know, maybe you know her. She's only been here like three, four years now, so. Uh, you might know her. Maybe you went to high school, Pardo High School up there, National High School, whatever. Um, you know, she went to church at uh, uh, Basilica Santo Nino. I think that was her church there. Um, so I leave you now. I hope everybody the best. And uh, I look forward to hearing your comments. Okay now. Bye for now.